This is the tenth in a series of videos in which I'm restoring a Creed 7B teleprinter. I've got up to the stage where I'm ready to reinstall the main drive motor. Uh, I've stripped the motor down, re-greased the bearings, cleaned and undercut the commutator and now I just want to make sure it runs before I bolt it back into the machine. I've got it hooked up to a power supply. The supply is currently set to 12 volts. It is a 24 volt motor but I just want to start it on a lower voltage just to make sure that um, there aren't any issues. I don't want to put too much current through it if it's uh, not working correctly. It is a, a shunt motor, so I've got the two windings, the um, rotor and the stator wired in parallel. And I will now apply power. I've got the current uh, limited to three amps and it should start up and run there is no speed control at the moment because the governor is a separate um, part of the system so it should just spin at a relatively high speed. So I'll turn the supply on. That's a good sign. I'll increase the voltage now to 24 volts. Okay, this should be running fine. It's uh, drawing 1.6 amps at 24 volts. No unusual noises, no sparking, so that's looking quite promising. So what I'll do now is uh, get the machine back on the bench and uh, get this installed. Right, so the motor fits in this space, there's two uh, mounting brackets and the motor just rests in them, it doesn't actually bolt in place, it, uh, the brackets are bolted to the base and the motor just sits in these two uh, recesses. Before I can fit the motor I need to reattach the uh, motor filter and the speed control or governor brushes. Uh, they solder or they connect to uh, these two wires so I'll get those soldered and then we'll start looking at fitting the motor. Right, I have the motor filter soldered back in place I'll now get the motor attached to the bracket. Um, when fitting the motor, the motor contacts sit down in these uh, contacts. These are sprung, so as the motor is dropped down, in theory, they should make contact with the connectors on the bottom of the motor. So we've got these four connectors, and they should sit in here, so we need to make sure that these posts actually fit into here correctly. This boss fits in this recess, and then there's another bracket that fits on the other end. You can now clean these up. And this sits on the, this boss here. Okay, so it's uh, quite heavy. I'll put it through into this boss and make sure that the connectors align with the uh, sprung contacts at the bottom. Push it right into the uh, mounting at this end. And I'll support the weight of the motor and fit the bracket on the other end. Okay, so I'll swing the machine around so you can see the way that the motor's fitted. Okay, so the motor's firmly secured, the contacts are in the right place, it's obviously still free to spin, and the brushes are for the speed control. So these are wired in series with the power to the motor. And then on the back of the motor we have a speed governor. And before I go any further, I also need to repaint this. Uh, but I want to just quickly demonstrate how I got this apart. It was quite an ordeal getting this thing open. And I wanted to get it open because I will no doubt need to adjust the speed. Uh, the speed is critical on these machines, uh, hence the governor. Um, but the way it works is it sits between the motor and the power. There's a centrifugal switch in here and that is just used to make sure the motor is running at the correct and constant speed. So before I go any further, I'll go into the workshop and show you how I, how I got this open. 
I wouldn't normally show this sort of work in these videos. A lot of the time during restorations is spent in the workshop either making new parts or uh, restoring the original ones. It's quite dull and tedious work a lot of the time, sometimes it's interesting. Um, but I thought I'd show this particular one simply because if you've been watching the restoration series for the Creed 7B that I'm doing, you'll know that there's quite a few individual parts and most of the time it's just simply cleaning them. I've had to make a couple of small parts but um, it's been relatively straightforward. But I had so many problems with this particular part I thought it would be well worth showing this in case you come across something similar. Um, this is a technique I use quite frequently for this sort of thing but in this, uh, on this occasion it was pretty much the only way I could deal with the problem I was having and that problem was getting this metal cover off the speed governor. There's an adjuster screw inside here, it's essentially it's a spring and a counterweight and when this spins round the counterweight flies out and opens a set of contacts and the spring is calibrated with a small adjuster screw and it uh, governs the speed of the motor. The problem is I could not get this outer cover off. It's obviously been on there for a very long time. There's a single small screw. Uh, take that out and in theory should be able to separate these. There is a, obviously a join here. This is metal, but this is Bakelite. So it's very important not to poke a screwdriver in here and try and lever it off because that will, that will just shatter. Just, uh, there's no strength in small pieces of Bakelite whatsoever. And you would just destroy the, um, the backing. It's actually quite thick, but this lip's quite thin. Um, I tried the usual uh, tricks, heating, cooling, releasing oil, uh, but what tends to happen over time is the paint that's on the inside of this cover kind of merges into one with the, um, the Bakelite and because it's bonded to the metal and then it becomes bonded to the Bakelite they effectively become one piece and it's pretty much impossible to get it off without doing some serious damage. Um, this is one method I tend to use that works quite well. I tried everything else and spent several hours on this and I could not get them apart. Um, so what I do is I mount the unit in the lathe, so it's in the jaws like this. I then, while the lathe is rotating slowly, as I put um, a blow lamp on very low heat, something like this, and then as this spins I will heat up this portion of the metal so it's, it's heating evenly. I'll get it up to 150 200 degrees, let it cool, then I heat it again. I then take a grommet, so it's a fairly deep grommet that's the right size to fit onto an air duster. So I have the air duster attached to my uh, compressed air system. Uh, I've currently got it set to about uh, 75 psi but I had to go up to nearly 120 to get this off originally. Now if you're going to do this sort of thing, um, firstly I advise you not to. It's uh, quite a, a dangerous thing to do because this thing could explode and fly apart. But at the very least wear safety glasses. And then probably just as important when you're doing this is ear defenders. I know there's a lot of um, overuse of health and safety these days, but trust me, if you do this, you absolutely must have ear defenders on. If you've got 100 psi in this and it pops open, the sound pressure wave exceeds 160 dB and it can burst your eardrums. So a good pair of ear defenders. I'll just put those on. Okay, so what you do now, if you probably guessed, is put this in the lathe, get it nice and warm. That's why I'm wearing the glove. Uh, it's cold at the moment, but uh, obviously if it was hot, you'd need the glove. You then press the airline over the hole that the screw normally goes in. The grommet, of course, seals it. Slowly put air in and it will pop the unit apart. Came across, came out. It opened very easily that time because obviously I've already had this open but the first time as I say I had to get it to quite a high pressure and then it just come uh, open with quite some force so make sure you're holding on tight. It doesn't continue pushing once it's released because obviously all the air escapes but as I say it does make a very loud bang when it opens so uh, just make sure that um, you've got good ear defenders on. 
and then uh, what I had to do once I'd got it apart the first time it would not go back on it was so tight so I just um, took about one or two thou off um, this face and now it's still quite a tight fit but uh, at least I can get it on and off when I want to so I just thought I'd show that in case you come across the same problem um, it spreads the load out quite evenly on the baker light and as you can see it is quite thick so it's not it's unlikely to break but it could do if it doesn't open don't keep turning the air pressure up because at some point this will shatter um, but it worked in this case but I did have to go to a reasonably high pressure and a bit higher than I was really comfortable with but the only alternative really is to uh, basically carry out uh, is basically to try the methods that would do far more damage okay so I hope you found that interesting um, it's not something I would really advise doing because of the size of this uh, the total force pushing that cover off when it finally released was about 1200 pounds but it was the only option I got at that point without um, taking steps that would have damaged this um, so as I said it's not a technique I would advise but certainly one that um, does work okay so the governor fits on the end of the motor shaft um, it presses up against the two brushes so you only need to press it on as far as is required to get the two brushes to press reasonably firmly against the two slip rings don't have it pressed too hard otherwise you'll cause excessive wear on the slip rings um, they'll wear out the brushes will wear out and uh, it uh, won't give you any benefits uh, once this is fitted then there is an adjuster screw that we need to turn to adjust the speed of the uh, motor and the way I'm going to time this is with a timer counter that I'm going to attach to the other end with a, an optical sensor but you can do this any way you want uh, I won't show this in any detail unless you particularly want me to uh, but essentially you just run the motor unfortunately you can't adjust this while it's running but you see how fast or how slow it's going uh, adjust the screw accordingly and then test it again until you're running at the correct speed the correct speed for this particular machine is 3000 rpm um, and it has to be fairly close it's uh, it, the speed of the motor is what essentially allows this thing to decode the incoming data stream and if it's running at the wrong speed it won't be able to decode that data don't try and test it by attaching the keyboard and pressing keys to see if it prints because of course it will because the same motor that's decoding the keys will be the same motor that is uh, being used to decode the bit stream that that generates so in other words you might be running at an arbitrary board rate and because that board rate will be the same for the keyboard as it is for the receiver it will appear to work but when you attach it to something else that's running at the correct speed obviously it's not going to work so to attach this just slide it over the motor shaft as a set screw and as I say you press it just far enough to put some tension on the uh, on the brushes pressing against the slip ring tighten the set screw it doesn't need to be hugely tight it's quite an efficient clamp and then once you've got that you can power up the motor assuming everything's um, working I have tried this already so I know the motor works uh, so I'll now start at the motor obviously don't get too close to this uh, he's going to grab anything loose that's nearby test the speed of the motor as it's running then you stop the motor adjust the screw to either increase the speed or decrease the speed and then start the motor and test it again as I say I won't do that on camera it's a bit tedious but um, if you do want to see it let me know and then once you've done that you can refit the cover and um, that's this section of the printer completed in the next video I'll look at refitting the solenoid and explain a bit more about how that works I have oversimplified its operation up to this point but we will look at that in detail in the next video